In this video, Jake and I are taking the train from Paris to Epernay in the Champagne region of France. Hello from Epernay. We are here in the Champagne region of France. We decided to do a little weekend trip out here to try some champagne because it's the Champagne region of France. And so we had some lovely breakfast this morning. And yeah, we have a tour of the Moet um, cellars later today, so we'll bring you with. But yeah, it was wonderful. It's about an uh, hour 15 minute train ride and pretty straight east of France. And yeah, we have some exciting stuff planned today, including going up in that suspended balloon thing. So it should be fun. We walked around the visitor center and I had to use great restraint to not pick up some of these souvenirs because they were so funny. Champagne is my religion, champagne addict, like, mmm, some of the stuff was on hinge. Next, we headed over to our cellar tour and champagne tasting at Moet and Chandon. Hello, it is me from the future popping in to talk while I show you pictures of the Moet cellar. You were not able to take videos due to safety reasons, but they said take all the pictures you want, so I did. And I also wrote down some fun facts about champagne to read you. So, without further ado, there are 28 kilometers of cellar underneath Moet. 35 million bottles total is what we were told. Champagne needs to be aged for a minimum of 15 months to be considered champagne. To make champagne, you ferment it two times. The first fermentation is to make wine, and then they open it up and ferment it again. And that second time is when they add that yeast, it's what adds the bubbles to the champagne, and then they age it with the yeast in it, and that adds flavor. There are, I believe, seven types of grapes grown in the Champagne region, but the three that they use most often to make champagne are Pinot Meunier, Pinot Noir, and the Moet team has 13 people, I believe, that do quality control to get the champagne tasting the same year after year, and they want to make sure it's the exact same color, the exact same flavor, and yeah, they work and they blend different champagnes, and sometimes to get that exact same taste, they'll use wines from so those are my fun facts and now I'm going to hop back in time to our tasting at Moet when it was okay to take video again. So we finished up at Moet and came to get some lunch and now I think that we are going to walk to Ovie, which is a little village through the vineyards where we can try some more champagne and just kind of take in the views of the vineyards in that area. And then tonight we are going to check out the suspended balloon, so I'm really excited for that. Sorry, it might be kind of loud. I don't know if you can hear me. Might have to re-record this, but anyways. The walk between Epernay and Avier is about five kilometers. So that is our destination up there on the hill. 35 minutes out walking. But it's been a nice walk, beautiful path. Now that we are actually on a path, dehydrating. Walking looked easier on the map than it actually ended up being. At first, it was a lot of walking alongside roads. Then we got on a path for a little bit. And then towards the end of our walk, almost everybody that got to Avigny seemed to be driving. So we were passed by a lot of cars, but I will say it was absolutely stunning. The walk was gorgeous. Maybe one of the most like pinch me, this isn't real moments of my entire time in France so far. It looks like most people drove up here. Uh, not a lot of people walked. Beautiful. Jake, would you recommend walking? Oh. For the experience, yeah. For the experience, yeah. For safety? No. <laughs> so it talks about here that the Benedictine monk and cellar master Dom Perignon played an instrumental role in the history of champagne production. So that is this church. After seeing the church that Dom Perignon was buried at, we did a few champagne tastings. The whole town was a lot more walkable than our hike to get out there. So it was really fun and just absolutely gorgeous. I can't say that enough. 
we took an Uber back. And then it was balloon time. Preparing to go up on the balloon. There it is. Ooh. Looks kind of high. Are you scared? Yeah, I'm gonna jump. <laughs> We're not gonna jump. Here's it coming down for landing. This is what fate has in store for us as well. <laughs> it's gonna be bumpy. Okay, we'll speed this part up for ya. It's relatively gentle. So before we did the suspended balloon, I had a uh, ride on an actual hot air balloon on my bucket list, but I'm a little bit scared of heights. So it turns out that this experience was maybe just enough for me. If I don't think about it, I'm fine. Oh yeah. Oh boy, you're being so brave. Here's how the down looks. I can't capture because I'm too scared. We were like passing as French. We had some dinner, and that was a wrap on our first day in the Champagne region. It is day two in the Champagne region. We had an awesome night last night. We got to go up in the uh, suspended balloon, which was still pretty scary, actually. I didn't think I'd be that scared, but I don't know. I just like the height, the height, you know, 150 meters. I kept thinking like that is like when you're swimming in a pool down and back and then down and back and then down and back again i was like oof and then yeah anyways it was fine and the views were really cool we got to see like where we walked and it's really hilly around this area which makes it good for uh, growing grapes like we learned yesterday because um it rains so much here that i mean it's nice for them to be up in the sun but also it prevents like any flooding as well so Cool fun facts but today we are going to the avenue of champagne again and we're going to walk down it a little bit more that's where the moet uh, was that we did our tour at yesterday but we didn't really walk down the whole thing so we're going to walk down it and hopefully try some more champagne at a few champagne houses in the tasting rooms and then catch our train back around four so it'll be a little bit of an abbreviated day but it's really fun here and really pretty and yeah i say that at every place we go but truly it is so a lot more bakeries and shops were closed this day because it was a sunday but we eventually secured some breakfast and then enjoyed some champagne outside at a tasting room so i asked the guy how to hold these um, at our moet tour yesterday and it's not this because it warms the champagne you hold by the stem but he said if you're also trained to flex you can hold it like this or like this but this is proper pro tip after our first champagne tasting of the day we kept walking along the avenue de champagne which is the home to a lot of the champagne houses and we tried some champagne sherbet we ended our time in the champagne region with one last tasting and of course i liked this one because they give you chocolate to pair with the sweeter champagne <laughs> Then it was time to head back to the train station. We learned a ton of champagne fun facts that we will be annoying people with for years. Got some champagne glasses, champagne flutes, and we are headed home. Thank you so much for watching our weekend in the Champagne region.